Well, let's look for a pair of congruent figures here. Um, well, I, if you're looking at what I'm looking at, I'm seeing this triangle, and I'm imagining that it rotates like this. Really, because it does. So let's try to make sense out of this. I'm going to take that away for now. And I'm going to list all the tick marks that I see here. You know, I've put numbers in there, and so I didn't have to use the three letters. So I'm going to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Angle 2 is the angle down here, congruent to angle 4. And then, let's see, I've got a, and I've got, of course, Y and W congruent. And then I've got these other marks, X, Y congruent to Z, W and these opposite sides congruent. So we said before, you know, right now we're looking at the six properties that, that are true when triangles are congruent. Six properties, that is, three pairs of matching sides, three pairs of matching angles. We're going to need less to prove later on, but all six, I've got five listed there. So let me go back to my rotation here. And I see there's the missing side, the one we haven't mentioned, is XZ, the diagonal of that figure. And in fact, it's used in both triangles, this triangle and this triangle. When we look at a figure like that, where this segment is used twice, we're going to call this the reflexive property because it's a component of each of the two triangles that we're trying to establish a relationship between. And those two triangles are, of course, right there. Make sure you get them in the right order. Again, from the one that's shaded now, that's if we've got x, well, right now, if we've got x, y, z, the x here is going to correspond to the z here, z, w, x. So x, y, z corresponds to z, w, x. Clearly a rotation. Okay, this is a little trickier one. Um, I want you to notice that I've got a few tick marks here that AB is congruent to ED, AC is congruent to EF, and that the angle at B is congruent to the angle at D. Now the figures are rotated, and I turn them like this, they might look a little more like each other, and they do look to be a perfect match. Um, but you've probably noticed, I call this F sub 1 for a reason. Um, these triangles, well, the way they're drawn here, they actually do match, but here's the problem. One, consider, given only these pieces, this segment matching this one, this segment matching this one, and the main angles that match, I could also have drawn the triangle this way. And then they clearly don't match. Now, remember what we said, if it's not true all the time, I guess you're going to have to say it's false. So the only conclusion I can come up with is that these triangles are not congruent. Let me superimpose the two on top of each other. So you see, with these given tick marks, there's two locations where F could be. So therefore, there's not a unique triangle. There's not a triangle that's congruent to triangle ABC. So in this one, there are no congruent figures according to the tick marks that are given. Well, here we go, looking to name some congruent figures. And I'm sure your eye just jumps right at this. You're looking at this figure and its reflection like that. Well, that's what we're going for. And clearly, we've got a pair of overlapping triangles there. We've got a bunch of tick marks. Let's sort them out. First off, this is what's just plain given. I've got angle A congruent to angle D. I've got angle B congruent to angle C. I've got the segment AB congruent to the segment DC. So I've actually got enough parts. Now, we're going to learn later. It's enough to make the triangles congruent, but let's, let's be, um, we don't know that yet. So let's be more thorough. I'm going to look at a couple angles down here. I know that these angles, I'm going to call them 1 and 2, are also congruent by something we've just called the two, the 
the third angle's theorem, which says that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, or two angles of two triangles are congruent, say that three times fast, then the remaining pairs are also congruent. Remember, this is the triangle and its reflection. Those are the triangles I'm looking at. Well, let's, uh, let's look at another piece of this puzzle. I'm going to take this, I know that this segment, BG, is going to be congruent to this segment, CF. That's going to be the addition theorem, and we stated that much more lengthy last chapter. When I've got congruent segments, see these two segments are congruent, and they're added to congruent segments, then their sums are congruent. So therefore, this sum and this sum are congruent. And we could also perhaps use multiplication theorem since uh, all four of these segments are the same, but that's a trivial matter. I would say I would say addition theorem or segment addition right there. So I've got one more piece to this puzzle, and this will also be the addition theorem, segment addition, because I've got this segment AF here, and if I add FG to it, I've got GA or AG. And again, if I take this segment GD and I add this segment FG to it, you can see I've got the segment FD. So the result is I've got six congruence conditions. When we have uh, congruent triangles, there are, well, all pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, all pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, and we have just demonstrated that all six pairs, the three pairs of angles are congruent and the three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. Let's look again at the triangle. So again, it's this triangle and it overlaps with this one, like that, just like that. When we write the congruence condition, we're going to write it so that, well, we have to get them in the corresponding order. The A corresponds with, with the D, B corresponds with C, and of course the G of the, of the triangle swinging from the left corresponds with what's shaded now, the F. So those are your two triangles. Okay, we won't spend much time on this one. Well, you see we're not looking at triangles here, we're looking instead at pentagons. And I've got a figure here, and I've got a figure here. And the fact is, uh, I've got a whole bunch of tick marks. I'm not going to list them this time because every pair of sides seems to match. And they do. And we'll do the classic way of demonstrating. I'm going to rotate them. They're given to you on your paper like this in a textbook. In your mind, you need to be able to move it like this. And I pick it up and I move it over like that. And it's an exact fit. Of course it is, because I've got matching angles. In succession, I've got matching sides. And um, so all the corresponding pieces match in order. So when I list this, these two figures are indeed congruent. And I would just list them, for example, this way. I can start anywhere I want on the figure. X, W, V. And I can go, I must, of course, go around the figure. And then I would have to go around the figure in the corresponding fashion here. M, L, K, etc. And, of course, many ways we could state this. I could rearrange the letters. But no matter how I do it, I just have to have them, the corresponding, well, the corresponding vertices listed in order. So we see this congruence business, it's not just for triangles.